journalist interviewing another journalist. This may sound strange, but it is not when the interviewee is Paolo Tullio, a very famous Italian critic of food and wine and an icon in the history of Italian emigration to Ireland. Paolo, are you proud of your Italian origin? <laughs> of course I am. Um, I think uh, it's a very major part of who I am. And so I refresh that pride once a year when I go to Italy for all of August and uh, enjoy meeting my friends and my family. You're from Gallinaro. From Gallinaro. Gallinaro is in the province of Frosinone. It is indeed. And it's one of the 13 towns that are in the Camino Valley. It's the one right in the middle. The beautiful Camino Valley. And the beautiful Camino Valley. I've heard so much about it. Have you not been there? I was there once and it was full of fog, which looked like any time Dracula would appear. I don't know, something like that, you know? It's uh, one, of the, one of the more unusual weather patterns that we get in the winter, in the winter months. I see it especially from my house in Gallinaro, because Gallinaro is on a hill. Yes. And sometimes you wake up in the morning and you look outside and you think you're looking at the sea. There's just these little islands popping out. Yes, of the yes, fog, yes. which just sits all across the valley floor. A very, very impressive uh, sight, I would say. It's yes, an unusual yes. sight. Tell me, uh, Paolo, you are a very important and famous uh, food critic, food and wine critic. Very kind of your, say name, so. your name, you know, precedes you wherever <laughs> you go. And uh, but your talents. Don't stop at that. The talents go beyond that because you've been an actor, yes. an author, a yes. broadcaster. Yes. In fact, as an author, you wrote a book some time ago called you North know. of Naples, South, South of Rome, depicting the area of Choceria of where course. you come from. Of and this book was serialized in RTE yes. and you were the presenter of it. Yes. Was this experience important in your professional career? Um, I don't know if it was, but uh, I certainly enjoyed it. And um, we spent a month in Italy doing the filming. And uh, eventually we made a, a six-part series, yeah. which eventually was shown on PBS in America yeah. and Australia and South Africa. Um, basically, it was shown just about in every English-speaking country in the world. And very um, important for all the Italian communities abroad. Of well, course. it was certainly important to um, <laughs> There are a lot of people turned up in Gallinaro with a book underneath their arm looking for the places that they've read about. Yes. The Gallinarese enjoyed that. A good plug for they, the area they liked from that. the tourist point of view. Yes, yes they liked very it. good. And you as a, a writer, uh, as a critic of uh, food and wine, do you think that uh, should, it should be in the brief of uh, critics like yourself uh, to spot, identify restaurants, big or small, whatever, that not only offer good food, but also offer good value for money? Because very often, not so much you, but some of your colleagues write about a restaurant for lunch, at the end of the review, they say, and we, the bill came up to 120 euros. I mean, isn't that a bit of a snobbery attached to it? Um, I don't know how they work. I can tell you that the way I work is I don't get paid for my expenses by the independent. So I get a flat fee. So the more I spend in the restaurant, the less money there is for me. So I go looking for places that give value for money. That way I get to keep more of my lump sum yes. than... But other people who, who could just simply submit the receipt yes. and get reimbursed don't care how much they spend oh, yes. because they're not spending their own money. Oh, I see. I'm that spending is, my own money. That's what is all behind. So that makes a big difference. Right, right. Okay. It's easy to spend other people's money. Yes. Paolo, you have written about so many restaurants of all sorts. Mm -hmm. How do you rate Italian restaurants in this country? Well, I've had a lifetime of disappointment when it comes to Italian restaurants. And certainly if you look in the Golden Pages, um, nearly every restaurant in Ireland seems to be an Italian one. Except it's not. 
Um, they, they, they make dishes that you've never heard of, like penne with cream and chicken breast, um, pizza with pineapple, um, carbonara with cream. I mean, the list is endless of these makey up dishes. But I have to say, in the last two, three years, there seems to be a change afoot. Now I'm finding restaurants, not often, but I'm finding them where I can eat good Italian food. And they're not making compromises. They're not changing recipes to suit the Irish palate. They're doing them as they should be. And it's great to see. Very encouraging. Hey, tell me something, final question. Are you happy to do what you're doing here in Ireland, in this country? I think I've been extraordinarily lucky. I think I've been fortunate in my life. I've managed to do something that I enjoy doing and found somebody who paid me for it. Um, and I think, if anything, is the epitome of the good life. It's being paid to do something you enjoy. Well, that is the secret Isn't it of just? good living and good, <laughs> well, personal satisfaction and professional satisfaction Absolutely all rolled into one. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Paul. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you.